I'm going to start this evening with some verses in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter. Starting at the first verse, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? I want to look at that question tonight. Lord, what will you have me to do? It's a, it's a discussion topic that we've been having at our house lately. Um, as, as newly retired people and getting used to this, it's what do we do now? What, what are we supposed to be doing now? And it's, it's not the first time in life that we face that question. You, you face that question often, really. I think as, a, as you get towards your latter years in high school, you start asking, what, do, what am I supposed to do? Your friends ask, what are you going to do? Well, what am I supposed to do? And whether you choose to go to college or you join the workforce, pretty soon the question comes up again. What do I do now? What am I supposed to do? You, you meet somebody and you get a little sweet on them and they're a little sweet on you. And it's, what am I supposed to do now? What, what should I do? And, and on it goes. Whether you're you know, starting a family or buying a house or a car or whatever. You know, medical situations, all kinds of things. You come to the question, Lord, what will thou have me to do? So tonight we're going to look at that. And if you're sitting here and you have a big question that you're wondering what you're supposed to do something about, I'm not going to answer it for you tonight. Um, you, you got to figure that one out. But there are some things that we know that the Lord would have us to do. So, seems like we should start at the beginning. And that's that we must be born again. First mm -hmm. Timothy verses two, uh, chapter two, verses three and four says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. yes. What would you have me to do, Lord? I'd have you to be saved. Yeah. That's where I want you to start. Uh, Sunday morning we heard to serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah. He'd like that. Yeah. Come before his presence with singing. He'd like that. Um, we heard Sunday night that we need God's Spirit in our lives. Amen. He'd like that. Those are things, that's where we need to start. And then I came up with, and you might come up with a whole nother list of things, but this is the list I came up with. I came up, we need to keep clean. In John we read, uh, First John we read, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he, imp he is pure. And if we look in the verse before to see what that hope is, it talks about seeing him and being like him. So we need to be pure. And in Ephesians chapter five, verses 26 and 27, it says that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by his word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but at that it should be holy and without blemish. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people in this world who seem to go through life and be able to stay clean. You know, they just, they're just clean people. I am not actually one of those people. I, I don't enter my kitchen without grabbing my apron and putting it on. I, I, I know me, I'm gonna get messy. I, I have dedicated paint clothes that when I'm painting, which I seem to do quite a bit of, um, I, I go ahead and put on my paint clothes because I know I am gonna get paint on me. Well, as we go through life, 
You know, we really need something on us to keep us clean, to, to help us stay pure and holy before God so that we can be that bride that's without spot or wrinkle. Does it take work sometimes? It does, it does. This is, this is a dirty world. You know, sometimes, sometimes you're someplace, we were camping, boondocking, and it, you know, it's just kind of dirty sometimes. And by the time you've been do, boondocking for four or five days, you think, I really would just as soon not see anybody I know um, because you just get a little dirty. And that's the way, that's the way this world is too. It, it, it's just dirty. And it takes work to keep ourselves pure, as it says here, without spot or wrinkle. Can we do it? Sure. Yeah, we can. It can. With God's help, we can do that. Another thing God would have us to do, it says here in John, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. And you could have a whole teaching on exactly what those are, but I'll, later on in the same chapter, it says, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved to my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. It also says that his commandments aren't grievous. Right. They're not burdensome. Right. God bless you. And the reason why is if you love me. Mm -hmm. if, if we don't love somebody and they're bossing us around, it's kind of hard to do what, you know, our flesh just says, I don't really want to do what you're telling me to do. But if we have that love, it just makes a world of difference, doesn't it? And if we love the Lord, keeping his commandments is not grievous. It's not hard to do. And in Revelations, it says, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. You wanna to go to that city? You wanna have a right to that tree of life? Amen. Keep my commandments. We come to Matthew verse, uh, chapter five, starting at the 13th verse. It says, ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. I, I can a little bit. I made some salsa this year. And it's, salsa just is, can, can kind of be kind of little until you get salt in it. And you gotta get the right amount of salt in it. And then it just, comes to life. And it says here, we are the salt. We bring life. Yeah. We add flavor. We're something different right. that lifts up what's around us. Those verses go on to say, uh, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. They may see your good works, not so that they see what a good person you are, but that they know those good works spring from our Father which is in heaven. So we are to be salt, we are to be light. Those are things when we ask the question, what do you want me to do? Those are the things that he wants us to do. That verse there, that he may see your good works, kind of takes me to the next thing on my list, and that's charity. Now, when in our modern world we think of charity, we think of, of giving, and whether it's money or helping somebody in some way, time, whatever, um, the Bible uses it as love. Both of those uses of the word are things that should be, things that we should be doing. Yeah. In uh, Matthew chapter 25, starting at the 32nd verse, it says, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. 
and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. If there was ever a time, I think, to do good works, I think it's this year. There's, there's needs, you know. There's people who, I think of our, our churches in India where they were out of work so long and they have nothing to begin with, mm-hmm. you know. And they're, uh, the people weren't even allowed to go out to go shopping, but as if they had money to go shopping with. Um, needs. We had the, the fires here locally. People have needs. Mm-hmm. There's a need. And it's not only things that people need. It, it's time, too. You know, with the people shut in and not able to get out. The, you know, they say the suicide rate, depression, all that is, is, is up because of these things. There's things that we, we can do. And they don't have, if we look at this list of things here, these aren't big things. They shared a meal with somebody, gave them a drink, you know, gave them some clothes. Not big things, just things that we can do to help other people. Um, when we were on our recent trip, we stopped at Walmart, and you know, with this question, you know, what are we supposed to be doing? Uh, we were walking from our truck towards the star and store, and we heard this uh, car start. The only thing is it didn't start. His battery was dead, and he tried to start it, and he tried to start it, and he tried to start it, and Jim and I just kind of looked at each other. It's like, okay. <laughs> so we turned around, and, and we helped the guy. Not a big deal. Didn't cost us anything. But while well, Jim and the man were working on starting his car, I, I did say something about God. Uh, just little opportunities to help people and to reach out to people and point people to the Lord. But we read in 1 Corinthians, where, uh, chapter 13, in the love chapter, it says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, we're talking about the other charity now, it profiteth me nothing. So we could do all those things, but we need love behind them. And that love only comes from God the Father, that kind of love that, that reaches out to others like that. All of these things really can be summed up in Micah 6, 8. It says, He has showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. To do justly. You know, we hear a lot about fairness and what's fair and what's not fair. And now I don't even want to go there, but to do justly, to do what is right before God. And that's not always what is right in the eyes of our fellow man. And sometimes they might think you're a little crazy for doing some of the things that you know God would have you to do, things that are right before God. But that's where we want to be, to do justly what is right before God, what is just before God, to love mercy. You know, it it doesn't even say to be a little merciful. It says to love mercy. I've, I've been trying to work on that one a little bit. 
Um, you know, it, it's really easy to get, you know, this 2020, um, it, it, we're all a little isolated. It's really easy to get in your own, you know, and anyone tries to get in, it's like, uh, love mercy. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. None of us are perfect people. I hope you didn't think you were because I've just popped your bubble, but none of us are. We're all, we're all people. And in ourselves, we have nothing to be proud of. We have nothing to be proud of. You know, if you think of where you could be tonight, we have, we have in ourselves, we are nothing. Mm -hmm. But with God, it's him. Yeah. It's him. Mm -hmm. So to do justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. And the last thing on my list, it says I have is be watching. We have a, a window in our house that if you are inside that and looking out that window, you can see the front gate. And sometimes when I am eagerly anticipating the arrival of somebody, I will be looking out that window. Now the funny thing about that window is it's actually in the master bedroom closet. So it's not like I can be sitting on my you know, comfy chair looking out the window watching. I, I have to be standing there at the window watching. And I think that's the way the Lord would have us to be when it says watching. You know, be, be vigilant. Don't, don't be just sitting there with your feet up. Be doing and, and be watching and be ready. Yeah, I, I think all of us can look around at the things that have gone on in the world this year and, and think surely the return of the Lord is at hand. Surely it has to be, it, it just has to be. And we wanna be ready. Amen. We wanna be waiting, we wanna be watching. And as we're doing those things, we wanna be reaching out to those around us, whether they're in the church or outside the church. We want to be an encouragement yeah. to others to be ready, to be waiting, and to be watching.